Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I want to first of all thank you for all being here today. Of course, this is a solemn day. 19 years ago, what happened to our nation. I am joined today by US, our esteemed US Congressman Stephen Lynch. Congressman, thank you for being here. And Greg Hanley, our county commissioner. And I see Councilor Rita Mendez and Councilor Jeff Thompson. I see Senator Michael Brady, Pastor Beals, and Reverend McCoy, and retired Fire Chief Ken Galligan. My name is Robert Sullivan, and I'm the proud mayor of the city of Brockton. And today is, is uh, something that all Americans must honor and respect and pause for what happened on that Tuesday morning 19 years ago. I do want to welcome those that have never been to the city of Brockton. Thank you for being here. But I also want to thank the brave men and women that served the city of Brockton, firefighters, policemen, and of course our EMS from Brewster Ambulance that's here as well today. I want to recognize our great fire chief, Mike Williams, for being here. And Police Chief Manny Gomes couldn't be here, but Captain Alpha McNulty will be filling in for him today. And I want to thank the Pipes for what they do every single day. But today is a day, again, as I said, to remember, to pause. It's a solemn day, but it's a day that we must honor those brave Americans. And that's what they were, truly brave Americans. So with that being said, let's open up this today, this uh, solemn ceremony with the national anthem, please. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets a red glare the bombs bursting in flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the I want to thank Anna Elise, who is a junior at Brockton High School, for that beautiful rendition. Thank you so much, Anna. At this time, I'd like to uh, have Pastor Beals please come up, the Brockton Police Chaplain, for the opening prayer. Pastor. Our gracious God, as we come before you this morning, we come with hearts understanding the difficulties that so many had faced 19 years ago and many others since then who have died or have experienced loss. We thank you, Lord, that you have preserved our lives, and I pray that each one of us would always remember the sacrifice that so many had put forward on that day. I thank you, God, for the first responders in particular the men and women that have given of themselves, not only on that day, but each day, facing challenges, difficulties, and dangers that the majority of us will never even begin to experience. 
We ask God that we would always keep them in our prayers and thank them for the good and hard work that they do. Lord, though we experienced difficulty all those years ago, we thank you that you have protected us from any further difficulty of that magnitude. I pray that our thoughts and our remembrance would always be first and foremost on you. Your word tells us that you, God, are our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And I ask that this would always be true of the people here of Brockton, especially, again, those that are our first responders. I pray, Lord, for the leadership of our city, of our state, and of our United States government and ask that you would be close to each one of them. Help them to make wise decisions that would honor you and that would protect the men and women of our great country. Bless this remembrance this day, we ask, in the almighty name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Beals. And I do also want to recognize retired Fire Chief uh, Richie Francis for being here as well. Thank you, Chief. So again, good morning, and thank you for being here. As I said at the beginning, my name is Robert Sullivan, and I'm the mayor of the city of Brockton. And today is a solemn day. Today is a day of remembrance of what transpired those 19 years ago. It was a day different than this weather-wise that Tuesday morning, September 11, 2001. It was a clear, beautiful day, a fall day, when the U.S our esteemed beautiful nation came under attack when terrorists hijacked four commercial airlines and then those planes were used as projectile to strike targets on the ground. That day we lost nearly 3,000 brave Americans, fine Americans, and since that day many more have perished because of what they inhaled that day, toxic chemicals, we have lost many people, not just that day, September 11, 19 years ago, but for the last 19 years due to that day. We also have to think about who died that day. They were brave, each and every one of them. They were true Americans, they were heroes. They were moms and dads just going to work in New York City. They were Port Authority members, they were EMS. They were our brave military service members at the Pentagon. They were New York police officers and firefighters at the Twin Towers, at Ground Zero. And of course, those brave Americans on Flight 93 that did what Americans do. You fight back. You don't give up. And they crashed in that Pennsylvania field, but they really saved the day in the U.S. Capitol. Today we remember we will never, ever forget. 9-11 is etch etched into our history, our fabric, our memories. Today, we must be thankful for our first responders each and every day. They are the brave men and women. They are the individuals that choose a career path where they put their lives on the line, service over others. They will sacrifice to protect and serve. And I want to thank each and every one of Brockton firefighters and Brockton police, it truly takes a special person to run into a burning building, a crumbling building, or to chase someone that has a firearm. I'm just so, so thankful, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, not as the mayor, but as a Brocktonian. You put your lives on the line, but there's an expectation that you go to work and you do your job, but you need to go home to your families, to your loved ones. And on that day, 19 years ago, that didn't happen to many, many, many individuals. But I just want to publicly thank you because in, in light of what we're experiencing right now with COVID-19, it's a lot of uncertainty, it's a lot of fear. But the brave first responders in this city, in our county, in our commonwealth, and in our country, they disregard fear. They do their job and they do it exceptional. I've witnessed true professionalism, dedication over my 50 years in the city of Brockton but it's no greater than now as the mayor working with you and cherishing what each and every one of you do. But today we must pause and we truly must remember what was lost on that day. 
but we also re must remember what was established that day, how truly great our nation is, how really vibrant our people are in this country. When we are tested and we were damaged and harmed, we come back and we come back even better. So I just want to say today, we must remember and pray. We must listen to the words of Pastor Beals and we will hear the words of Reverend McCoy but we must always remember what happened that day 19 years ago. God bless each and every one of you, and God bless our United States of America. At this time, I'm going to uh, ask our, uh, our awesome, wonderful, fantastic Congressman Stephen Lynch to come up here, and of course the Congressman uh, had an election on that day. Congressman, thank you for being here today. Uh, good morning, everyone. And thank you for being here. There's a saying that there's a, there is loyalty in the simple act of remembrance. And that's what brings us here today. As, as our great mayor was mentioning, September 11, 2001 was the day of my election uh, here in Brockton. I didn't represent all of Brockton at that point. We hadn't gone through redistricting, but that day is etched in my heart. You know, as someone who had very rarely been to Washington prior to my election, uh, it just, it struck me. First of all, when I got to Washington, immediately after the, the attacks and was sworn in, I was assigned to the Oversight Committee. And our first job was to review, to do a, an after-action review of the attacks of September 11th, and we began a, an exhaustive investigation of how that happened. We began the, the process of providing support for the victims and the families. And we began the process of holding those who perpetrated that attack accountable. There were 343 firefighters who went up the stairs in the North and South Towers. There were 60 police officers. There were a couple of paramedics. There were eight EMS members of the Port Authority in New Jersey, security forces as well, and 2,977 overall uh, victims on that day. And as the mayor correctly pointed out, we estimate now that there were 1,400 first responders who died after the fact because of the inhalation of materials during their rescue operations and recovery operations. There were people from the building trades who went down there day after day to try to recover bodies unsuccessfully, who also succumbed and were remembered in the Zagrota Act, which tried to recognize and address the health impacts on all the people who responded to those attacks. But during that, during that investigation, one of the things that struck me was that we were asked to review all of the radio transmissions of that day. So beginning with the, the departure of the flights from Logan Airport and Dulles and, and Newark, New Jersey, right through the, the last radio broadcast from the North and South Towers, And we really didn't know what went on inside the towers until we, we, because all of those firefighters were hidden from view. Those, those police officers were hidden from view. So we really did not have transparency into what was going on inside the towers. But those radio transmissions shed a light on, on what was going on. And we really had no idea until we listened to the radio transmissions. And two of the last 
transmissions that we, we received was from Chief Pfeiffer at the time and, and the fire marshal. And they were transmitted from the 82nd floor. The planes in the North Tower came in at the 93rd floor, and because of the jet fuel and the combustibles there, it was impossible to go higher. Uh, no one escaped above, above the 90th floor. But to think about the fact that those firefighters, with the assistance of the EMS and the police, marched up with full gear, full battle dress, radios, equipment, oxygen tanks, in some cases chainsaws, axes, bolt cutters, climbed in full, full dress on that day, got to the 82nd floor, reported casualties and were in the process of trying to bring those people down. Talk about unspeakable heroism in the face of imminent danger, almost certain death, yet that they continue to do their job. It was a day of disaster for our country, but what I remember most is the way this country came together. Came together for the families tried to repair the damage that was done, gathered those victims' families in a warm embrace, gave honor to their sons and daughters who perished that day, and as a nation came together, Republicans and Democrats, and held those individuals who perpetrated that barbarous act held them accountable as one nation, one nation under God. That's what I remember most about that day. I wasn't alive in 1941 during Pearl Harbor, but I learned about that from my dad who served, my mother who was a welder during the Second World War. And as a young man, I learned about this country's response and, and how, we, how we respond to national tragedies. And I see the, the young people here today who, like Anna, probably wasn't even alive at that moment. I'm hoping that through gatherings like this each and every year, and I thank, I thank Mayor Sullivan for doing this, this, this Ceremony has great dignity, and I appreciate my colleagues in government, Commissioner Hanley and, and Senator Brady, members of the Brockton City Council and School Committee, for being here. I'm thankful for the firefighters who are here, the police and EMS, for honoring your brothers and sisters who perished that day. And I'm hoping that, that ceremonies like this will remind us of the unbelievable heroism, the courage, and the sense of duty, and of what it means to be an American, was shown to this country and to the world on this day, back in 2001. We're going through another national crisis, one of longer duration, But the casualties continue to mount. Over 190,000 Americans dead from this pandemic. And once again, the firefighters, the EMS, our healthcare workers, our police are on the front lines. So it's once again a day to remember that in the midst of all this, we have some among us who answer the call. And we are most thankful for your courage and your commitment to the city of Brockton and to our country. May God bless these United States of America and may God bless the city of Brockton. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. We will now adhere to a moment of silence.
to honor those that were lost. May they rest in peace, and may their surviving loved ones have comfort through prayer and guidance. I will now ask Senator Mike Brady to please come to the podium. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you to our elected officials and Congress and Lynch. I remember that day very vividly as well. And, uh, we must never forget, and as the Congress mentioned, we must pass on and teach our younger people that were not born on that day. And as the Congress mentioned, I was not born on December 7, 1941. My father served in World War II, and we also remember the Strand Theater Fire in 1941 as well. And we lost 13 firefighters. So we must never forget, and we must honor all our public officials. And I'm honored to be here as your senator to honor all our public officials. We must continue to do the best to honor them day in and day out when they put their life on the line. So God bless you all, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Senator Brady. And I do want to recognize uh, City Council President Wood 7, Councilor Shirley Aziak. Thanks for being here, Madam President, and Councilor Jack Lally. Thank you, Councilor, for being here as well. At this time, I am going to uh, ask uh, Greg Hanley, the county commissioner, on behalf of the county to say a few words, and we thank him for coming to the city of Brockton today. Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Congressman, Senator. It's a pleasure to share this uh, day with you today. Quite frankly, folks, I'm a little um, choked up by the words of the congressman and the mayor. And I would just like to echo their sentiments about our first responders. Do you remember where you were on that day? I think most people do. I was in the city of Quincy. I was a newly elected city councilor. I was sitting in Arthur Tobin, the clerk of court's office in the city of Quincy, and with a young school committeeman, Bill Phelan, who was a future mayor of the city of Quincy, when those planes hit those towers. And we never forget where we were on that day. If you remember the following days and weeks to come, the national pride that we had and how we came together. And I look to today and where we are with the pandemic and all that else that's acrimony that's going on in this country. And my hope and my prayer is that we as a country, we as a state, commonwealth, a county and a city can recapture that national pride as we as fellow Americans just try to get along. Just remember, we're all in this together. We appreciate the service and the hard work of our public safety folks. And I'm just so proud to be here today and I want to thank the mayor for the invitation. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Commissioner. At this time, I would like to have Brockton Police Captain Arthur McNulty please come to the podium on behalf of Chief Manny Gomes. Captain. Good morning. Uh, regrettably, the mayor couldn't be here today, and uh, he sends his best, and um, it's an honor to stand in this, in this place. Thank you for inviting the Brockton Police Honor Guard to participate in today's remembrance ceremony. As years passed, I am grateful that the mayor and the, the Brockton community continue to gather and remember the lives lost on September 11th. We also gather to honor all first responders and families who were impacted by the tragedies on September 11th. In a year filled with fear and loss, one that will also go down in his, history books worldwide and will forever be in, ingrained in our lives and our memories, much like 9-11, today is a grim reminder that through the experience we share all, as citizens and community members, it takes strength and unity to overcome the challenges that we face. On behalf of Chief Gomes and the entire Brockton Police Department, we are honored to observe this memorial with all of you here today. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Captain. Now it's uh, my honor to have uh, our great Brockton Fire Chief, Mike Williams. Chief. Good morning. For all Americans, the phrase 9-11 will invoke a special meaning a memory of a moment in our history when the world as we knew it changed forever. It is fitting that every year on September 11th, Americans join together to honor the memory of the more than 3,000 people who died on that day in 2001. And it is fitting that we observe a moment of silence as a tribute to those lives cut short and as a symbol of the empty places left behind in the hearts of those still living. But these solemn ceremonies held on this day each year will always be more than just a remembrance of the past, more than just a tribute to the lives lost. These ceremonies are and always will be a remembrance and a tribute to the courage and compassion that our country, excuse me, not only showed on September 11th, 2001, but every day since. It is a moment to pause and remember the millions of men and women who have and still do serve in our military, with our police forces, our fire departments, and our EMS providers, giving themselves to protect us and keep us safe. How they teach us that there is still common good in this world, and that values such as duty, loyalty, self-sacrifice and kindness will always triumph over terrorism and hatred. Our world is ever-changing, whether it's protecting against another terrorist attack or, as we have in this past year, deal with a deadly virus. We must stay vigilant and strong, not let our guard down, and keep our population safe. May God bless all of you and your families, and may God always bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chief Williams. We will now, um, Captain McNulty, myself, uh, Congressman Lynch, and Chief Williams, we will now uh, lay the wreath over it, the half uh, flag that is already half staff.
At this time, uh, I would like to have the closing prayer with Brockton Fire Chaplain, uh, Reverend McCoy, please. Let us pray. Merciful God, we gather here again, mindful of the attack on our country 19 years ago. We grieve for the many lives lost. We sympathize with their families and friends who miss them still. We pray for their strength, for their courage, and their consolation. We recall, O oh Lord, with pride the many acts of heroism, the sacrifices made by so many that dark day, the sun in the sky, but smoke and fire and fear on the ground and in the air. We give you thanks for all those who sacrifice so very much, giving of their lives and life itself. We give thanks too for the courage, for the leadership and the love which have prevailed. Be with us, we pray, O oh Lord. Be with the personnel of our fire services, with those who serve in law enforcement, and with first responders everywhere. Be with the men and women of our armed forces, we pray, their families at home and abroad. Defend them with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and their temptations. Grant them courage, O oh Lord, in the perils they face, and a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. We ask all this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you for those words, Reverend. This will now conclude our ceremony, but it doesn't conclude what we all as Americans will remember today and days going forward. So again, on behalf of uh, myself and my office and all that work here at the City Hall, we want to thank you for being here. This is what makes Brockton so great, coming together as a community. So God bless each and every one of you. Stay safe, be well. Thank you for being here. Thank you.